Hello, Ian France here. I'm doing a three-part video review of the Edward Tufte course called Presenting Data and, in and Information. I took it here in Portland on August 6, 2015. It was a wonderful course and I wanted to do a video for each section of the day, which was the study hall, presentation by Edward Tufte and homework and some of my thoughts at the end. So let's get right to it. We arrived on the 6th and we were given an agenda that had what we would be doing that day and we were told to start a reading assignment uh, for an hour before he came on to present. And so I did that in the, in the class, and I basically started to see that we were reading the ends of chapters or the beginnings of chapters. So there were seven readings, and they were eating, either readings, five of them were at the ends of the chapters, and two of them were at the beginning of the chapters. So what I decided to do for the review was actually go back read the entire chapter that the content was recommended for and then I'll tie it together with what was presented that day. So what I have below this video are the themes and things from the readings that were selected for the course presenting data and information. So what I wanted to do here was not so much go through those bullets, you can read those on your own, but actually go through the books themselves and sort of highlight some of the things that were part of the themes, but also uh, interests of mine. So the first reading was on envisioning information, and the first chapter was chapter two, micro and macro readings. And what you see here, in the micro side is Rockefeller Center. It's an incredibly detailed map. It has the windows of the buildings. It has the architecture, architectural design, uh, points of St. Patrick's Cathedral, telephone booths, trees, uh, artistic pieces in different uh, parts of the um, area of downtown. So it's it's one of the examples of how detailed design really can aid a visualization. The more detailed in this case, the better off it is. The second part of that chapter, it and it starts and it starts at this micro level and it keeps expanding out. So we go to Japan and we look at population densities near Tokyo. What is uh, important about this piece visually is that these are arbitrary boundaries. You can actually look at the map and see what might be the equivalent of counties or districts of some kind. But there's these little grid squares in there, which are the boundaries for the micro data, but they're statistically fine. I mean, you can use arbitrary boundaries as long as you uh, do it in a statistically wise way and I thought that was a really good point of also saying look at your sample sizes before you start building visualizations and, and start to think about when you're collecting the data what might it look like so uh, you can plan plan ahead of time the conclusion of the chapter has us zooming out into space we're looking at earth and all the various pieces of debris that are floating around Earth that could be discarded rocket, um, <laughs> I guess, uh, engines, satellites, uh, pieces of paint. There's, there's all kinds of different ways to look at debris. But um, so this is a, is a macro view, but it's very finely detailed. It's, it's, it's actually incredibly accurate. So it's not to scale there, but um, tracking all the various pieces of debris in space and how they move. So some of the main points and themes sort of tie in with the 
presentation part, but the the takeaway that for me from this section was I'll I'll read to you the the highlight I thought, which was showing complexity often demands hard, thoughtful work. Detailed micro macro designs have substantial costs for data collection, design, custom computing, image processing, and production. Expenses similar to that of first class cartography. Yes, these are expensive designs to make. They're time consuming, they're detailed. You might actually have to do build some custom computer software that wasn't around before to actually produce some of these visualizations. But what you're able to do with that later is, is basically well worth the effort. So that was the, our first reading from that chapter. It was actually the two pages that I just read from, one of the pages, and it's actually the only two pages in the entire book that has text side to side with no visualizations. So that was the first reading. Now let's move on to the second one, which is from this book, Visual Explanations. And the uh, chapter was Explaining Magic, Pictorial Instructions and Disinformation Design. I really like this chapter. Uh, I like magic. I like seeing how magic is done and learning about it. And so the, uh, the, the personal connection for me here was, was high. And I thought the designs were really interesting. So here's the example that of a card trick using an envelope. Looks like you're putting cards in the envelope, but the magician's really thumbing a card behind it. And you see the outline of their hand. And that was one of the focal points of this chapter was that from your first person perspective, like I can see the camera, but I can't see what's behind the camera. From a real world perspective, my, I can only see really what's in front of me. But when we design things visually to communicate information, we can show these little transparency indicators using dashed lines or whatever it is. We can show multiple things happening, what the audience is supposed to see, what the magician sees, how do you deflect um, attention. That's all covered in this chapter with a lot of really great uh, examples from magic books. And then it moves into disinformation. Uh, this quote really captures the disinformation side. Where scrutiny is damaging, scrutiny is diverted. And so here's... An example of that where the Surgeon General warning, large block print, it has a deep black border around it, all the uh, letters are uppercase, it's pretty hard to read, it's kind of confusing to the eye, and so it's uh, intended to be that way. It, it's intentionally to have you gloss over and move past it and to leave you uninformed or to, worse, uh, give you misinformation. The chapter concludes with one of the points in Tuff Day's presentation side, which is how to present. And it goes into, uh, you know what, I'll talk about that in the uh, presentation section. Let's move on to the, uh, the next reading, which is out of the same book. It is Visual Confections, Chapter 7, Juxtapositions from the Ocean of the Streams of Story which is a Salman Rushdie uh, line on the opposite page. But the confections are multiple pieces of information conveyed in a single image. So this is the anatomy of melancholy. There are various tiles around the outside or compartments, and within them are poems, symbols, ways to communicate many things to the viewer. I, I kind of get to pick and choose what I want to look at, what I want to take away from it. And that's one of the powers of the confection. Here's an L. Lazitsky self-portrait, also a confection. It contains the artist, the mind of the artist, the tools. There's a sort of a, a halo style symbol in there. And um, confections can be uh, very informative, and this is one that we've 
launched into space. It tells it tells people where the planet Earth is from the sun, what humans on the planet look like. It has something about pulsars and galaxies, which I don't really understand. But um, that was our assigned reading there. It was actually at the end of that chapter. And so <clears throat> the next few come from this book, The Visual Display of Quantitative Information. We start with the opening chapter, Graphical Excellence. And I wanted to read a couple of points from Graphical Excellence and what displays, what data displays should do to, to reach that. Show the data. Introduce the viewer to think about the substance rather than about the methodology, graphic design, the technology of graphic production, or something else. Avoid distorting what the data have to say. Present many numbers in a small space. Make large data sets coherent. I thought those were great points. And there's a lot in <clears throat> the uh, graphical excellence that over time series and, and different ways to plot things. Here's a don't do. It's basically saying do not plot things that just continue to grow in a simple linear change. You can actually do that with summary numbers rather than have to make a graph to show that. So uh, you're just kind of exercising your design skills, I guess, if you want to make a graph that shows that, but it's not really necessary. There are uh, examples, of course, of William Playfair in here and J.H. Lambert, uh, as well as the William Playfair, or I'm sorry, the jo Charles Joseph Menard, uh, Napoleon's March, very well-known graphic, Con has many dimensions to it. Um, so that's part of graphical excellence. We then moved into chapter five, which is called chart junk. And chart junk <laughs> is giving you a lot of bad graphic examples and showing you many techniques visually that are annoying, that confuse the eyes, that make it difficult to tell what's really going on. And so uh, grateful for these kinds of examples in the, uh, the book here. It also talks about the uh, self-promoting duck. That is an image or a graphic, a visualization, I should say, that's been done simply for decoration. So the purpose of its construction was never to be information. It was only to be decoration. Uh, that is a duck. So that was interesting. And then finally, the last chapter, Aesthetics and Techniques in uh, Data Graphical Design, really just goes through, uh, make sure you have a properly chosen format, use words, numbers, and drawings together, reflect a balance, a proportion, a sense of relevant scale, um, avoid chart junk, and it just gives some different examples here at the end of ways to uh, create pleasurable aesthetics in charts and graphs. Like here's two examples where one has um, different line th thicknesses and, and so forth, and the other one is all the same width. So you can, you can sort of tell the difference there between um, what's more aesthetically appealing, what's the, the purpose, and so forth. So anyway, I wanted to just go through, those were the readings for the course, and uh, I'll do my next video on what the actual presentation contained. Thanks for watching. Bye.